there once was a duck. His name was Gilbert. Now, Gilbert was a standard duck. Average duck height, average beak length, and average duck brain capacity. Gilbert had a normal duck life. Waking up at 7am to brush his feathers, grab a quick snack on the way to work, and then head to the pond to aimlessly swim in circles and earn breadcrumbs from strangers until about 5pm. After that, Gilbert heads to the duck store to buy some cleaning products, a pack of cigarettes that he knows are bad for him, and some pasta to cook himself a quick meal. On his way back, Gilbert has to stop at a red light. He knows this red light, this is going to take a while. So he sits back and lets his mind and eyes drift across the view. The city is busy at this time of day, lots of ducks making their way home to prepare for the next day, or simply enjoying the warm summer afternoon and eating some ice cream or whatever ducks do after work. Gilbert's eyes come upon a billboard right across the intersection. There's a female duck on it, scantily dressed, staring seductively back into Gilbert's eyes. Next to the duck model is a sentence, written in red, big, bold letters. You can't have this. The story of why your life sucks, now in cinemas. Odd, Gilbert thinks. Why would they assume that my life sucks? He shakes his head. The stoplight just turned yellow and he decides to forget all about that billboard in the next three seconds. It was Friday, so as is tradition, Gilbert heads to the bar down the street to meet with his two friends, Dan and Dave. Dan is a construction worker, a site manager in fact, as he doesn't hesitate to remind everyone of his recent promotion every third sentence. Gilbert knows that Dan worked very hard to get this promotion, but Gilbert wishes he would just shut up about it every once in a while. Yes, we get it Dan, you work 10 overtime hours every week Dan, and sucked up to your superior for half a year just to be granted more work Dan, and all that for a minimal increase in pay Dan. Every time Dan told them a story about his work, Gilbert was glad that he worked a cushy office job at the pond instead of risking his life and destroying his body working at a construction site. But still, Dan was his friend, so he listened. Dave was the polar opposite to Dan. He was just as old as them, but still had not finished his college degree or planned to in the near future. When asked about why he decided to stay in college, Dave told them that he just didn't feel ready to give up his student life and his freedom to the slavery of a job. He dropped phrases like, I need to find myself, or you don't understand how hard this is for me. Dan and Gilbert both knew that Dave still lived with his parents, and they also knew that his parents were not entirely happy about this. Dave clashed with his parents frequently and told his two friends all about this pain every time they met. They just don't get me, Dave says. I wish they would just give me some space. So the three of them sat there, in the bar, sipping some beer. Gilbert usually left the talking to the other two, since they did plenty enough for the three of them, and just quietly listened while answering the occasional question thrown his way. Neither of the two really cared what Gilbert had to say, since they were both perfectly happy to talk about themselves and... Gilbert often observed how they both seemed to be in dialogue while talking about completely different things. So eager it seems to just get everything out and leave not a word unsaid in the short three hours that they met up every Friday. Gilbert sometimes wondered how it got to this point. The three of them used to be the closest friends in high school, and even before that. They had done everything together. Go on vacation, steal the neighbor's lawnmower to try and turn it into a hovercraft, Spoiler alert, don't do that by the way, it doesn't work and you will hurt yourself and or others. <clears throat> they copied homework from one another, sat and watched the Super Bowl together, but sometime along the way, they seem to have grown apart. Now, they all lived very different lives and Gilbert mused only stuck together for the old times sake. On his way home from the bar, Gilbert thought about the past. He often did that these days for some reason. He never considered himself to be the sentimental type, but all he seemed to think about now is how easy life had been when he was younger. Back when he didn't know what bills were and his boss wasn't constantly telling him to do things that Gilbert didn't really care about doing in the slightest and the world just seemed to be so much more colorful and exciting. Nowadays, Gilbert was stuck in a rut. He did the same few things every day just to earn barely enough to not starve or freeze to death during winter. He hadn't even been able to afford a vacation in the last three years, even though he tried saving as much money as he could. For some reason, probably due to being slightly more intoxicated than he meant to be, 
Gilbert the Duck opened his beak and raised his voice for the first time in years to loudly proclaim, My life fucking sucks, and my job fucking sucks, and my friends fucking suck, and why the fuck is the world so boring and grey all the time now? I wanted to be an astronaut, I wanted to be an artist, I wanted to do good for the world. I wanted my actions to mean something, to my family, to my friends, to me. A bunch of people that were still out turned in bewilderment, staring at the screaming, clearly drunk, slightly disheveled looking duck that just spoke his mind for the first time since childhood. All of them, except Gilbert, would forget this ever happened within the next hour. Gilbert faces a problem that I think most of us living in these modern times have or will encounter at least once in our lifetime. The moment your eyes open fully and you start asking yourself questions you thought were reserved for pretentious wannabe philosophers at the function you reluctantly decided to attend. Questions like, what am I doing with my life? Who even am I? And why the hell did I just write a quite shitty short story about a duck rejecting modern society instead of going to the water park to cool off this whiff of existential crisis that just hit me on a Sunday? <clears throat> Sorry. <sighs> Regardless of how or when the search for meaning manifests in your life, you, as well as everybody around you, will have to find a different way to deal with it. While researching for the script, I asked the question, why do humans search for meaning in the first place? The all-knowing, all-encompassing best friend next door Mr. Google gave me an answer that didn't quite satisfy me. Firstly, meaning provides purpose for our lives. Secondly, it furnishes values and standards by which to judge your actions. Thirdly, it gives us a sense of control over the events in our life. Lastly, it provides us with self-worth. Now I don't know about you, but this didn't really answer my question. It does, however, throw in another interesting term that I feel is intrinsically linked to the search for meaning. Purpose. Purpose means, via Oxford definition, the reason for which something is done or created, or for which something exists. This then lays the groundwork for what Gilbert and perhaps many people out there feel. A lack of purpose. A lack of volition in their own actions. A couple of years back, at 21 years old, I underwent what many people might describe as a bit of a rough time, eh? Meaning that over the course of the COVID lockdown, I lost the plot. Nothing I did, from getting up in the morning, to going to university and paying even a smidge of attention, to studying for a test, to just existing, really felt like it had a point. I got, perhaps understandably, a tiny bit depressed over this. I would try to talk to my friends and family about this, but... Nobody really seemed to understand what I was even rambling on about. My parents never seemed to have these thoughts in the first place, perhaps because they never had the luxury of worrying about such advanced mental struggles since they had to provide for me and my three older siblings for most of their adult lives. Different times, different struggles, I suppose. My friends appeared to relate a bit better to what I was telling them, but they didn't have an answer as to how to solve this problem either. So I did the only logical and sensible thing my 21-year-old worm brain could come up with. Drumroll, please. <clears throat> don't do drugs, kids. For those of you who don't know what this is, I would describe the effect of the substance as a door to your innermost self and all your fears, hopes, and dreams. It is often officially attributed in the medical space with very positive effects with curing trauma-related issues like PTSD and so on. I'm gonna save you the details of this so that the YouTube gods don't smite this channel out of existence, but here's what it boiled down to for me. I was afraid of dying alone, unloved, and with the constant nagging thought that I never even tried to realize my potential. Thoughts like these are, perhaps unsurprisingly, quite scary for a young and dumb mind to have, so I vowed then and there that I would do everything in my power to run away from this terrible specter of my future. Somewhere along the journey, I stumbled upon this word that we already mentioned earlier, purpose. And straight away, I thought that I now understood what it means. I declared, without a shred of humility, that I knew my life's purpose and that everybody else can suck it. Why, then, did I still doubt every decision that I made? Why did I still break down on the regular with a sense of directionlessness? Like my inner compass was just spinning out of control. Why did I still, after all the work I had put in until then, not know how to put my purpose into words. In marketing, there exists a rule. 
if you can't describe your brand in one or two short sentences, your message is not clear enough. And without a clear message, your customers will have a way harder time associating with your brand. After learning this, my head somehow made the connection that a purpose is kind of like a brand message, and should therefore be definable in one or two short sentences. I treated my innermost life goal like a business, completely disregarding the spiritual and emotional component of it. If you have the time, and you feel like the life situation that is described in this video applies to you, then I want you to pause this video right now and just sit in silence for a couple of minutes. Don't take up your phone, don't look at a book, or distract yourself with anything. I just want you to stare at a wall for a time and ponder what your life's purpose is. Literally just do this for five minutes and I guarantee that your brain will come up with at least one possible answer. Maybe it's the profession that you dreamed of as a child. Maybe it's the dream that your parents told you to forget about because it's not practical. Maybe it's the family you want to have one day. I want you to really sit with this image and observe what emotions you feel. What energy does it unlock inside of you? Does it motivate you? Are you perhaps already on a good path to reaching your goals? You don't need to put it into words, but you can try to. Our mission in life is something that is truly unique to every single one of us. Yes, it's easy to go through life seeing someone more successful than you and making it your mission to become just as or more successful, but I wholeheartedly believe that this is a fallacy. It is desire tacked onto yourself through envy and greed. It is playing someone else's game instead of your own just because you can. And it's not going to lead you to fulfillment. Your own mission needs to be known only by yourself and it does not require any affirmation of parents or friends or anyone else. Because at the end of the day, the only thing that truly matters is what you tell yourself about your life before you go to sleep. All that is important is that you can look at yourself in the mirror and smile, knowing that whatever it is you decide to do, you do it for yourself and only for yourself. Because on your deathbed, nobody will remember the wasted times or the lost opportunities or the hesitation or the endless cycle of asking why. No one but you. So find your North Star and don't let it go.